Joining us now is biologist Jeff Corwin. He is also the host of Ocean Treks with Jeff Corwin. Jeff, uh, life literally found a way here, right? Uh, is, this, is this common? Gotti, it's pretty amazing when you think about it, and it shows you the power of nature and how genetics drives us towards success and failure. And nature, this is a great example of the ultimate parachute for survival. It's actually scientifically known as parthenogenesis, which is the ability of a female to pre reproduce and create offspring without having an encounter with a male with another partner. So essentially, she's, she's using her own DNA to create a viable embryo, which she then either lays or gives birth to. And that's the term parthenogenesis, which literally means it's Greek for uh, virgin birth. Uh, so we've got evolution, which takes, it takes place over, I don't know, millions and millions of years. Crocodiles have been around forever, and yet we have her sitting there in a zoo. Are we seeing something uh, that we might see a lot more of? Is this a, a quick evolution based on captivity in zoos? Why is this, why is this happening? Hey, Gotti, you're right. You're talking about evolution taking millions of years, you know, something incredible about science. Remember when we used to believe in science? Well, this is a great example <laughs> of the power of science. So this is the first example of this happening in a zoo, but it's very likely that this isn't the first crocodile to experience parthenogenesis. We know of at least 50 different species of reptiles that do this. There are lizards, there are geckos, there are species of snakes. Copperheads can do it. Uh, anacondas can do it. What's interesting, though, about parthenogenesis is that you have two different types. You have uh, obligatory or facultative. So facultative means when the conditions are right, a female can do this. Obligatory means that some species can only produce 100% through a virgin birth. For, for example, the Brimini blind snake, which originates in Asia, they are 100% female and they only produce through this unique process. So what is great about parthenogenesis? Well, it's a great way to kind of mass reboot a species. It's excellent for colonization. So imagine an island situation like the Galapagos, a species would have to trial and error time after time, drifting there to colonize a new species there. But incredibly with parthenogenesis, you only need one. So for example, the Bimini blind snake that species that originated in Asia is now existing throughout tropical countries around the world, even in Hawaii, because it only takes one to find its way in a potted plant, hence its name, the flower pot snake, to literally spread itself around the world. The price you pay for, for parthenogenesis is that you tend to have a lower level of genetics and you mostly only produce females. And that's why we like the Jeff Corwin explanation better than the Jeff Goldblum explanation. Um, I don't even know also, where that even this... came from. That came from college <laughs> genetics. Wow. I, I, there is another story that I, I've been wanting to talk to you about. We've been following it very closely. It's the, the Vaquita Marina down in the Sea of Cortez. They are those tiny porpoises that are on the, the razor's edge of extinction. Last time we were down there, there was a fear that there were only like seven or eight maybe left in the entire world. And there's some headlines that say a dozen or so Vaquita uh, porpoises have been spotted in the, the Gulf there with calves. When you saw that news, what went through your mind? A glimmer of hope, maybe a slight mm -hmm. little reflection of light in what otherwise is a dark tunnel that's twisting its way down to extinction. The vaquita really is on the verge of extinction. There's maybe a dozen of these beautiful little charismatic porpoises left. They are the smallest of the porpoises and dolphins, only about five feet in length, weighing about 90 pounds. They are on the verge of disappearing. So yes, it is hopeful to see that they are reproducing, but they are vastly um, off the scale at the level that they need to be doing to reproduce, to even get to a, a self-sustained level. Uh, Gotti, why are we lo losing this species? The biggest reason is because they get entangled in fishing line and ghost nets 
So not a lot of people are killing vaquitas. They are protected, and I think they are revered throughout their range in Baja. But the problem is there's a lot of illegal fishing in the native waters where they thrive, or actually where they're barely surviving, not thriving, and they get mm -hmm. caught up in those nets. Plastic waste, we put about 10 billion pounds of plastics in our oceans every year. You add that up, throw in a little climate change, it is a recipe for extinction. Yeah, and unfortunately, those gill nets, I mean, the last time we were down there, we saw a lot of illegal fishing with those gill nets. Hopefully, that's going to be a big problem around the world. Sometime soon. Yeah. Jeff Corwin, thanks so much for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.